Hey, what's up? This is Reed. I'm republishing this video because I originally left out some important ways to implement these automations. I wanted to make it right, and some of these changes are actually going to make it easier. I appreciate all of your guys' support, and now let's get back to the video. Today, I have some interesting automations for you. One involves a phone charger, the other happens on a cloudy day. A few weeks ago, many of you sent in home automation challenges for me to set up, and wow, I can't believe how many incredible ideas were sent in. It took me a full day to read through everything, but I loved reading everyone's submissions. I'll be going over several ideas that I think apply to most people. Other submissions I'll cover in future videos, so if you still want to challenge me, you can in the link down below. The first idea is from Nico, who challenged me to automatically start their morning routine when they actually get out of bed. This is an issue I've had in my smart home, where I've scheduled the lights to turn on or music to start playing in the morning. But what if I want to sleep in a little bit and delay that, like I do every morning? Most people charge their phone right next to their bed at night. An easy way to automatically start their morning routine is when they unplug their phone. There are lots of different ways to do this. Originally, I set this up in WebCore, but an easier way is using Ift with an Android phone. You can use the Android battery service and have the trigger be if the phone is unplugged. If you were just using Ift for your morning routine, you would need to add some filter code to only run these actions when you unplug your phone in the morning. For SmartThings users, you can turn on a virtual switch from this if trigger, then use SmartThings to run actions if it was turned on in the morning. This is simple to do and my preference for how easy it is. You could even skip a morning alarm if you woke up early enough, which is pretty cool. Another option is an Android app called Tasker. If you want to connect SmartThings to Tasker, check out the app Sharp Tools. Both cost a few bucks each, so keep that in mind. Tasker has a learning curve, but there's so much you can do with it. More on that in a future video. And finally, if you're using an iPhone, there is a new feature in iOS 14. You can run automations when your phone is unplugged with the Shortcuts app. This is still in beta, and I wasn't able to only run this automation during a certain time, so you may need to use an app to add this logic in, or else it may not work for you. Along this same topic, Ron asked how to know if your phone or other device is done charging. Using these same iOS automations, you could also make the lights change color when your iPhone is done charging. This could be useful if you want to plug in your phone in another room, then be notified when your phone is finished charging. That way you can have a break from screens, if that's even possible. Another way to get this notification if you're using Android is with Tasker, or you could use a smart outlet that measures energy usage. You just can't use a normal SmartThings automation for when the power usage goes down to zero watts. When charging a phone, the number of watts jump all over the place and will even go down to zero while charging. I used a smart app with Simple Event Logger to track these numbers. Shout out to the bearded tech guy for showing me the smart app. So I had to make a web core piston for this automation, which is what I showed in the original upload of this video. It's not ideal, and Tasker or iOS automations are probably better, but the Smart Outlet does work. Really quick before the next challenge, I wanted to remind you all about our hats, link below to support the channel. I appreciate everyone that's bought one, and it can even help you if you have a bad quarantine haircut. Whew. Yikes. Normally we automate lights to come on at night because it's bright during the day. But what if it's dark and cloudy in the middle of the day? Or maybe you have a room, like I do, that gets darker earlier than other rooms in the evening. James challenged me to automate the lights based on how bright it is. I found several ways to do this, but some ways are better than others. Let's start off with If This Then That, which is the least expensive. You can easily set up your IFT compatible smart lights to turn on during the day when it's cloudy in your area. This uses filter code, which makes it only run during the day. You might be thinking, I don't want my lights to turn on all day running up my power bill, but actually two LifeX bulbs at 50% brightness for eight hours. I did the math and it's only a penny, so not too bad. So yes, you could set up the automation with IFT, but it's not my favorite. Here are two more options that I think are better. Another submission wanted the lights to turn on automatically from a motion sensor 
only if it was cloudy during the day. I made a web core piston to only turn on the lights if the weather is cloudy and there's motion. This is easy to do with a motion sensor compatible with SmartThings. But the person who challenged me is using an Echo Flex because they didn't want to make my job too easy. But it's possible with the Flex with a little extra work. You'll need to create a virtual switch in SmartThings. If it's from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m., the motion on the Echo Flex will temporarily turn on the virtual switch. That will trigger a web core piston to check if it's cloudy that day, and if so, turn on the light. This takes a little bit longer to run, so at night, when it's not needed, you can have a separate Amazon routine for the Echo Flex to turn on the lights normally. If you have a routine that turns off the lights from no motion, it will still work with this setup. That option was a little more complicated, but there's an easier and more accurate way. It just requires an ambient light sensor, which can sense the brightness of the room to turn on the lights. There are quite a few ambient light sensors that work with smart things. I happen to have this one that Innovelli sent me a while back. It's not perfect because you need a device handler, and it was slightly glitchy when setting it up. But there are a few things I like about it. It's a 4-in-1 sensor, including motion and light. But what's cool about it is that it can work on battery, or be plugged in, which isn't super common. For this light sensor, you can just use a regular SmartThings automation, no web core required. The way it works is if there's not enough light in the room and there's motion, then the lights will turn on. When viewing the sensor in SmartThings, you can see how much light this is sensing in real time. Once it's too dark, you can use that number in your automation. There are a lot of light sensors to choose from that work with SmartThings and other hubs. Even Hue has their own built in with their motion sensor, but it only works with Hue lights. This is my favorite solution because it's simple to set up and much more accurate. You're not gonna be wondering why the lights are randomly turning on because the weather data thought it was cloudy that day. I think you guys are going to love the other challenges that I'll be showing in future videos. And if you like this series, please let me know with a thumbs up or down in the comments. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again next time. Dad, can you play games on your phone? I'll take that as a yes.